Don't move. Ah, ah, ah. Do you feel the bite of cold steel against your neck? Yes, my dear prey, it is a dagger. If you struggle or draw breath to scream, well, I'm sure you can guess what will happen. You wouldn't want to bleed to death all over these nice, fine linens, now would you? Good. That's what I like to hear. Silence. Yes, you've received a bit of training for this eventuality, haven't you? Every noble needs to know the protocol when facing an assassin. Although in the end, the advice you're given is a bit... <laughs> Silly, isn't it? If the assassin bothers to speak to you, remain calm. Don't give them a reason to kill you sooner than intended, hmm? <laughs> the idea being to stay alive as long as possible. Delay the inevitable and hope for a miracle. What a joke. But I suppose miracles do happen on occasion, don't they? You may be in the middle of one right now, in fact. After all, you're still alive, though I could have easily dispatched you while you slept. I recommend you keep to your training and stay quiet, unless you want that to change. I'm going to do something I've never done for any of my targets now. I'm going to take off this mask and show you my face. Lucky you. Ah, don't forget the knife, my dear. Not one peep, remember? Mm, the spark of recognition is unmistakable in your eyes, even so. I'm flattered you recognize me. As potential heir to your house, I know you've memorized the names and faces of rival nobility, but, uh... <laughs> Honestly, I didn't think I'd merit the same treatment. After all, I'm a rather minor member of the Blancmont family. Beneath your notice. Even though my family and yours are bitter enemies, I think most of your clan wouldn't have bothered to remember me. You seem a bit confused. It's all very simple, really. I am the Blancmont's personal assassin. I've been officially adopted into the family as a cover. As you may have surmised, I was sent here to kill you. Uh, technically, you're not next in line. Your brother is, but, uh... <laughs> well, there's no need for manners here, let's be honest. He's incompetent. He would lead your family into ruin, which would suit the Blancmont's purposes quite nicely. You, on the other hand, could actually be a threat to us if chosen to lead your house instead. I'm sure you're wondering why I'm even telling you all this. If I wanted to kill you, it would have been easier to have never woken you up. And so we come to the true purpose of our clandestine little meeting this night. I could have killed you. But... Uh, that's the thing. I... don't want to. <clears throat> when I was assigned to eliminate you, I did a little spying to understand who you are, what your weaknesses are. Oh, don't look at me like that. I murder for money. Spying on you isn't worth getting upset about. Besides, it's only reconnaissance. Part of the job. I don't pick through a target's life for the thrill of knowing their dirty little secrets. It's just... business. But as I watched you, I found myself... <sighs> infatuated. I do not admit this weakness lightly, and make no mistake, it is a weakness. 
Feelings are a liability in my line of work. Compassion, empathy, never mind love. I thought I had deadened my emotions most effectively. Nothing like this has ever happened before, but... <laughs> why you, you must want to ask. Well, for starters, you're not bad to look at. I'm sure you know that. Some of your cousins may be considered more conventionally attractive, but only because they center their lives around their appearance. You have a sort of effortless, subtle beauty about you. Perhaps it takes an assassin to appreciate. Pleasing to the eye, but without drawing undue attention. Then there's your wisdom. The very reason I was ordered to take your life in the first place. You're practical and willing to set aside the unnecessary things others cling to. The fact that you alone have been arguing in favor of making peace with the Blancmonts in order to end our counterproductive feud. <laughs> you don't care about revenge, you just want to move on. It's a shame the Blancmonts think you're lying through your teeth to trick them. I know you really mean it, though. I put on a bit of a show when you woke to keep you quiet, but the truth is that I don't think I can bring myself to hurt you. It's one thing to snuff out the lives of greedy, cruel nobles who are a threat because of their ruthlessness. But to remove you from the world would be a crime. <laughs> you still have a sense of humor, even at a time like this? All right. Fine. Both are crimes. But the former is merely a crime according to law. The latter is a crime against humanity. I was given your contract quite a while ago. I've been spending a lot of time thinking about what I wanted to do. And I finally settled on something. That's why I'm here. I'm given a bit of leeway in my job. So long as I serve the Blancmont's interests, they don't care too much about how I eliminate my targets. So, this is what I propose. I bring you back with me. And you become a Blancmont. It's perfect, you see. You'll no longer be a threat to them. In fact, you can become an asset. You won't have to die, and... Well, we can be together. <laughs> oh, sure. Technically, we'd be of the same house if you were adopted into the Blancmonts. But you know how common that sort of marriage is among nobles. At least in our case, we wouldn't be blood relations. So, what do you think? It's not a bad deal, is it? You get to live, I get a chance at you, and the Blancmont's bitter rivals lose power. Everyone wins. Ah, <laughs> except your family. Yes, I suppose that is true. I don't like where this is heading. Uh. <sighs> Oh, and here I was praising your pragmatism. You wouldn't really be abandoning your family. You would just be... Uh, well, all right, you would be abandoning your family. But if I kill you, they lose you anyway. Uh, so you're not going to budge on this, are you? You insist that you'd rather die than join your family's enemies. Mm. Either you're more emotional than I thought, or much, much smarter than I gave you credit for. And I already thought you were quite clever. Ugh. Even if you refuse me, I... 
I can't bring myself to end you. I suppose in that way I'm a bit emotional too, aren't I? Still, you really should consider what I'm offering. Let's be realistic. The Blancmonts are the winning side in this conflict. It's inevitable. We're wealthier, we have better connections, and as you now know, we have a skilled assassin to deal with any dangerous threats. An assassin so skilled none of your security even knew I was stalking you. Do you really want to be stuck where you are now? If you do inherit the family, you'll be inheriting a dwindling empire. It would be such a waste of your talents. You'll die poor and destitute after spending your life stressing and fretting over your situation. Who would choose that? Oh, don't argue the point. Barring a miracle, it is a sure thing. Oh, well, aren't you clever? Yes, as I said, miracles do happen. But you've already got your miracle. Your miracle is that you're not dying tonight at my hand. Expecting more is simply delusional. And even if that doesn't happen, even if I don't kill you, think of what you're giving up. If you have any chance of getting your house out of the hole it's dug for itself, it will be through a political marriage. A forced one. Oh, but that's just it. I'm not blackmailing you into marrying me. All I want is a chance to convince you to choose me. As a Blancmont, you won't have to bear the responsibility of leading. So it doesn't matter who you marry. You can choose whoever you like. And I know, given time to know me, you'd choose me. I'm not a bad option. I have plenty to offer. I'm wealthy, intelligent, educated, and I feel we could really understand each other in a way others wouldn't. I would be devoted to you. I would do anything for you as your bride. Wouldn't you prefer an intellectual equal, someone with grit, to some pampered noble who has no thoughts of their own and no passion for you? You were born to nobility. You know what a marriage of convenience between houses is like. The two of you would lead parallel lives with nothing in common. Perhaps take the occasional lover to fill the void but never be satisfied. And no way out of the union but death. Taking my offer is the only way you get a chance at something more. Something only peasants can afford. Love. I... Well, I suppose, technically, I could join your house instead, but... That's... Ugh. I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but it's not as though I'm willing to drop my entire life for you. Or rather, I can't. I'm interested in you, and I'm taking quite the risk by ignoring my orders. A risk that may cost my life. But I am genuinely loyal to the Blancmonts. Even if it's technically only a cover, I am officially part of the family. And I am grateful to them. I owe them. You and I, we've only just met. I do see your point. If I won't drop everything for you, then how can I ask you to drop everything for me? I enjoyed observing your shrewdness from a distance, but I admit it's a bit frustrating now that you've turned it on me. Well, I suppose you've given me something to think about. You're more determined than my observations suggested. <laughs> I've just realized that I didn't accomplish even one of the goals I came here with. This is going to complicate things. 
Still, the fact that you can turn me away with nothing more than words intrigues me. I might be even more interested in you now than I was before. Uh, I expected to leave here with you. Or with your head. If I could muster the strength to master my own feelings. I didn't consider what would happen if you remained alive and at home. Well, I recommend you don't tell anyone that we spoke. Even if I can't bring myself to kill you, I don't have such reservations about anyone else. Don't test me on this, or they'll be the ones to pay the price. We'll speak again some other time. You may not have gotten the best impression of me today, but I'll try to show you a better side of me next time. One that I hope you're willing to fall in love with. And keep this in mind. At some point, I need you to stop being a potential threat to the Blancmonts. I may not be able to kill you, but unless we find another way, I may eventually have to resort to kidnapping. <laughs> I would suggest you help me find another solution as soon as possible. If not, they may send another assassin. For now, I bid you good night. I hope you manage to get some sleep. <laughs>